Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the torture room and we did some very dangerous stuff, we learned a bit more about Lotus, and overall just a good escape room. In this episode, we have now left and are preparing to make our way back to meet with everyone. Quick side note before we get into this video, we're going to be doing a major ending in this video, but I'm not too confident in my voice acting skills, so a little bit into the video I'm going to go ahead and play the voice acting from the remake over top the gameplay so that you could get like the most immersive experience possible, I guess, so just look out for that. Outside of the room, a hallway led off to their left. With nowhere else to go, they started down it. It turned left twice before they saw the elevator. In silence, they jogged up to it. Junpei pushed the C button. The elevator motor ground away, and before long they found themselves once again on C-deck. The door opened and they stepped off. They'd expected to find four other people waiting for them. There were none. Where did they go? I have no idea. Lotus shrugged. Something in the pit of Junpei's stomach stirred. He tried to forget the feeling and took off down the long hallway before him. Seven and Lotus followed at a run. They ran and ran and ran. The hallway seemed endless. Their destination had already been decided. The door behind the central staircase. There was a sun symbol engraved on the keyhole of that door. And Junpei had the sun key in his pocket. That key would open the door. It had to. That was why they ran for the central staircase. They'd run for quite some time when they arrived at the door that ended the hallway. Junpei stopped. He laid his hand on the doorknob, his breathing heavy. Seven laid a hand on his arm. Hold on a second, dear. Huh? We don't have the key for this one yet, right? There's a Jupiter symbol engraved over the keyhole. Seven was right. They had no Jupiter key. Then, we can't open this door. Unfortunately, no, we can't. Jeez. The sun door's gotta... Jeez. The sun door's gotta be just on the other side of this, you know? Frustrated, he twisted the doorknob. The door opened. Hey! It opened! What? The others must have found the Jupiter key. Well, what are we waiting for? As he spoke, he shoved the door the rest of the way open. And they rushed through. And stopped cold. The terrible scene before them made their blood run cold. Three people lay dead on the floor, covered in blood. Junpei felt a cold sweat trickle down his spine. He couldn't breathe. His legs shook. His body felt cold. Deathly cold. But his, bo but his blood was boiling hot. He could feel his mind begin to fade. He couldn't think. He couldn't concentrate. His mind was... blank. What the hell? What the hell happened? Seven's voice was weak and broken. He edged toward the bodies, his movement stiff. He bent down over Clover and pressed his fingers to her wrist. Nothing. She's dead. Suddenly, Lotus moved. Before he understood what was happening, her hand was in Junpei's vest pocket. Hey, what are you doing? He leapt back. Lotus looked up at him, terrified. The key! Get me the sun key! Why? Why do you think we have to get out of here before the murderer comes back? The murderer. The murderer. Once again, Junpei looked at the dead bodies. Santa, Clover, and Ace. That meant that the person who'd killed them was... No. No, it couldn't be true. Before Junpei could react, Lotus dove back into his pocket and came out with the key. Let's go! 
Without warning for without waiting for Seven or Junpei, she ran straight for the central staircase. They followed. Junpei shut his eyes and swallowed his emotions. Morning would have to wait. Soon they stood in front of the door. Lotus shoved the sun key into the keyhole and twisted it hard. But why? What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. I didn't feel it unlock. Oh no. Is it the wrong key? I don't know. Maybe. Lotus sighed, defeated, and leaned against the doorknob. She felt it twist. A small gap appeared between the door and the frame. What the hell is this? Wait, you mean the door was already unlocked? Why? And how would I know that? Whatever, let's just go. Lotus took a deep breath and slowly opened the door the rest of the way. And they stepped inside. In front of them was another hallway. It stretched out toward the bow of the ship. They began to run. Faster and faster they ran, trying desperately to reach the end of the hallway. A few seconds later, they were there. In front of them stood a massive metal door. <laughs> they were all breathing heavily as Junpei spoke. What the hell is this door? I can't see anything that looks like a doorknob or switch or lever or card reader or, or anything. How the fuck are we supposed to open this? We don't have a choice. We're gonna have to go back. No, no, I'm not going back there. There is a murderer back there. There was more stark terror in Lotus's voice than authority. She was almost begging. But I don't see any other doors. As he spoke, Seven stepped toward the door in front of them, as if to illustrate that it was the only door. It opened. Nothing surprising. A simple automatic door. Look, guys, I've got a really bad feeling about all this. The other doors were already unlocked, and this one's automatic. We haven't seen anything like this before. How could their situation possibly get worse? Three people were already dead. They'd hit the bottom, Junpei told himself. There was nowhere to go but up. He stepped through the door. And whatever hope Junpei had managed to summon disappeared. No. No, 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 no. It wasn't true. It couldn't be true. It was impossible. Utterly impossible. It was a dream. It had to be a dream. A nightmare. Yes, it was a nightmare. If he could just wake up. He was seeing things. Yes, that was it. This was just a hallucination. A lie. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. Right? June. No. No, the code names meant nothing now. Connie. Connie! Connie! Junpei cried out and leapt through the door. He flew to her side, his heart like a stone in his chest. Connie! Connie, hang on! Junpei swept her up and shook her by the shoulder. She moaned and her eyes fluttered open, but only barely. Connie! Jumpy? Her face was pale and her lips were dry and cracked. Her eyes were blank and cloudy. They stared straight at Junpei, but saw nothing. Junpei put his hand against the small of her back to hold her up. It felt warm and wet. He lifted his hand up. It was covered in blood. Oh man, Connie, what the hell happened to you? How did this happen? It was all I could do not to break into tears. Jumpy, I'm sorry. Her voice was thin. A minuscule thread that was the only thing keeping her with him. I... I might not make it. No. No way. No way. I am going to let you die. I am going to save you. I promise. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much. Oh, for everything. I was really happy to see you again, Jumpy. Really happy. Oh, don't give me that I was crap. You're gonna see me again lots more times. You've... You just gotta hang on. All right, Connie? You... You... What could he do? He looked up from Connie, desperate for something. Anything. Then he saw it. A small submarine. 
A submarine? What on the earth was a submarine doing here? No, that didn't matter. Nothing mattered, except saving Connie. That was the only thing he wanted. Junpei turned his head back to look down at her. Hang on, alright? There's a submarine over there. I I'm gonna go see if it works. No! Don't go! Please, don't go! Please, just stay with me, okay? I want to, to be close to you, Jumpy. When, when I... Connie. Jumpy, did you know you meant a lot to me when we were kids? I've liked you for a long time, Junpei. A really long time. Junpei's vision had gone blurry. It took him a moment to realize his eyes were filled with tears. He could feel a piercing point of heat deep in his heart, like a white hot flame. Jumpy, do you remember how we hung out a lot when we were kids? We went to the pool and to the fair. Do you remember playing snowball at the school? They're all memories I'll never forget. All of those moments are treasures to me. But I also wanted to go to a lot of other places with you a lot more. But that won't happen now. No. I mean, yes. Yes, it will happen. We'll go all sorts of places, Connie. You hear me? I promise. We'll go wherever you want. Really? Yeah, really. I swear. That makes me happy. Really happy. She said it to herself over and over, a weak smile creasing her tired face. Jumpy, I feel s s sleepy. No, Connie, don't fall asleep. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much. Her eyes were slowly closing. Junpei screamed, even as he felt his throat go hoarse. Connie! 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 Time passed. Junpei wept, curled around Connie's body. He cried and cried until he had no tears left. When the last tear fell, Junpei was no more. His body remained, but only as an empty shell. Somewhere, he heard a bell ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. It rang five times, then faded. Five o'clock. Quietly, gently, softly, he set Connie down on the floor. Slowly, Junpei stood. Only then did he realize that Seven and Lotus had not followed him. Where had they gone? Slowly, he looked around the room. There was nothing. No sign that they had ever been there. It felt as though every part of Junpei's body was made of lead. Slowly, he made his way to the door he'd come through. As he approached it, it opened, sliding apart with a sound like grinding stone. Junpei passed through the gate and into the hallway. His heart rattled in his chest. An empty, lifeless thing. It had been so utterly broken that there was nothing left to feel. When he saw their bodies, he simply stared. It was a lake. A sea of blood. Two bodies lay in it. There was no need to check. There was no breath left in them. His eyes lit on Lotus's wrist. Her bracelet. It was gone. He stared. It meant nothing to him. He didn't care anymore. 
He couldn't care anymore. Junpei's body felt numb. A part of him knew the lump of lead in his chest had once been a heart. He couldn't quite remember what it had been for. Tears poured from his eyes in great streams. He wasn't sure why. He gave up trying to make them stop. He turned around. The door opened again and slowly, numbly, he walked through. He kept walking. Why stop? An object set in motion. Simple inertia carried him forward. Eventually, he found himself in front of the submarine. His arm reached for the hatch. And then he was floating in water. His eyes stared down into it. He couldn't see the bottom. His back was hot. Dimly, he felt the blade of a knife in it. Who? One dead body lay behind door number five. The body of the ninth man. Another lay in the shower room. The body of Snake. At the central staircase were three more. Ace, Santa, and Clover. Just outside the door were two corpses. Those of Seven and Lotus. And in this very room lay the body that had once been Connie. And now, Junpei would join them. Who, then, had killed them all? Who? Junpei let out one last breath. Faintly, he felt the bubbles creep up the sides of his face. His consciousness faded quickly, dissolving away into the cold, gentle lapping of the water. <laughs>